Hi, today I want to talk to you about a relay race and some of the emotions that are connected to it. I'm going to share with you an amazing story from European Championships and honestly this is one of the favorite memories that I have throughout my whole coaching career. So stay with me till the end. I'm sure you will not regret this. If this is your first time to this place, this is the Into the Forest I Go channel where I talk about orienteering, a sport where you run with the map and compass. So if you want to explore the videos that I have on this channel, feel free to do so. If you want to support the effort, then you can do it through Patronite and the description is in the, the sorry, the link is in the description of this video, or you can actually do it also through YouTube itself. And now, Back to the relay. So, relay race is a specific kind of orienteering because normally orienteering is an individual sport, but when you go to a relay race, it actually becomes semi-group sport, semi-team sport. I'm saying semi because you're actually not running together with your team at the same time. It's like a set of three individual races, but the, 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 the final score is the combined effort combined result from all of those three races. So it is kind of like a team effort in the end, isn't it? And it is a little bit different when it comes to uh, the emotions, the stress, um, the joy also that you feel at the end. And I personally like it a lot. If, if I could run relay every weekend, I would certainly do that. I actually feel a little bit sorry that we don't have that many relays in Poland to participate in, but that's just the way it is. Now, what I, what I wanted to draw your attention to is that the emotions that we have connected with the relay are a little bit different than the ones that are connected with an individual race. Now, why is that? Well, it's mostly because we are aware of the fact uh, that in a relay, not everything depends on our own performance because there are those teammates, right? So first of all, you can screw up other people's race or second of all, someone else might screw up your, well, not individual race, but the end result really, right? So two of those things can happen. And I've seen many different reactions to relays that went bad. And truth, truth be told, many of those or most of those are actually coming from young people who are still very emotional. And, you know, the, the adults are usually a little bit more um, accustomed to dealing with their emotions, be it uh, very strong positive emotions or bad emotions. So one way or another, young people are struggling with this a little bit more than, uh, than the, the adult ones. And when someone screws up the relay race, it happened, and I've seen it with my own eyes, that the teammates, instead of being supportive, they are actually, well, you know, orienteering usually attracts people that are kind, smart, and uh, generous and gentle. So I don't want to say that the reactions are completely bad, but you can hear some small needles being put into the person that actually had that bad performance, you know, the worst race. So as a coach, I always try to address this before the relay race actually happens. So before any major competition that I've been to with the national team and before every uh, relay during that competition, we always have a talk and we talk not only about the strategy for the upcoming race, uh, but also about how we want to behave as human beings after the race, depending on the end result. And of course, if the, if the end result is super positive, then there is not much to discuss. Everybody knows how to behave and how to be happy and joyful and, and how to celebrate the, the win whatever it might be, it doesn't have to be the first place. Uh, but on the other hand, not everybody actually is aware how to properly behave when the race went badly. So we sit down, we discuss, I give people some of my inputs into the discussion, but most, most of the time I'm actually just asking questions and searching for the for the right answers in the group, and they always come because people know how to behave when the emotions are low, 
but sometimes it's hard to behave properly when the emotions are high. But when you prepare for it beforehand and you kind of visualize different situations that might happen, it's a lot easier. So after having these kind of discussions, I feel like we as a team are always ready to face the relay race and have as much fun and joy and get as much experience as possible. Now, the story that I want to share with you today comes from the European Youth Orienteering Championships that happened in Romania 2015. Um, surprisingly, I actually went and checked whether my memory was correct regarding the places uh, during this relay race. And the results are still there. So if you want to check it out, the site, the website is still available. Now, we had a pretty good women 16 team during that, uh, during that European Youth Orienteering Champs. Um, and we were actually hoping that this might be a team for the medal in the women race. So the race started very, very well because Kinga Krolik, who was running at the first leg, she came first with 20 seconds advantage um, in front of the second runner. So that was awesome. Now the second leg didn't go as well as we hoped and we actually fell down to the eighth place. But the eighth place was very short, very close actually to the medal positions because it was less than one minute to the third spot and I think it was minute and 20 seconds, something like that, to the second spot. So, you know, it was, we, we, we felt like we are still in play. And on the third leg, we had Zuzanna Moravska, who I considered at that time to be the best runner in the team. She was uh, solid when it comes to physical preparation. She was very good when it comes to map orienteering. So we were hoping that she will actually be able to catch up some of the places, maybe even get into the medal positions. So you can imagine that we were sitting in front of the spectator's control, really, really tense and just waiting, counting the minutes and watching for the runners coming out of the forest. Um, um, I, I, was, I, I was actually thinking in my head that if she has a normal race for her, I was expecting her to come uh, third, maybe even second. When we actually saw people coming to the spectator control, she wasn't there. So that got us thinking, okay, maybe she's not doing that well, but you know, it's just the first three spots, maybe she's right behind them. But then more people came and more people came and more people came and she was nowhere to be seen. I was actually getting worried at that point in time because I was thinking, okay, so if she should have been here 10 minutes ago and she's still not here, then surely something must have happened to her. Maybe she twisted her ankle, maybe something else happened, who knows, right? But it had, there had to be some kind of an accident. And as a coach, I can tell you that this way of thinking is very, or actually was very common for me. But throughout all of my years in orienteering, I finally learned that when stuff like this happened, it's very, very rarely because of some injury. Most of the time, it's just an unpredictable mistake that happened in the forest. And that was also the case in this relay. So Zuzanna had a pretty decent start, but then quite quickly she made a grievous mistake where she went into the wrong patch of green area. And this was uh, in, in the, 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 the kind of green areas that were over there were very hard to run through. Most of the time they were extremely thorny, so we had those spikes and it was super hard to get through. Now, she felt a lot of pressure as a run and responsibility as a runner running on the third leg. So obviously she wanted to get the, the best possible result. So even, you know, we talked about this, even if you make a mistake during the relay, you're not allowed to give up. You're, you, you're obliged to push forward and get to the finish line as fast as possible. Your time doesn't matter because what matters is the combined time of the whole, re whole relay. So even if you screw up, even if you lose some minutes, just, you know, bear with it and get to the line as soon as possible. Never give up during the relay. That was our kind of mantra uh, that I tried to teach to the youth. So she did just that. 
she kept pushing as much as possible but because she was in the mistake and she was having trouble finding herself she actually spent quite a lot of time in the green area and uh, that that cost her uh, many minutes that in the end just resulted us dropping even more places now the end result of the relay doesn't really matter but what matters is how the team behaved after the race has ended so i was i, I was struck and my heart was re really warm to see that the teammates absolutely supported Zuza after the race and even though she felt devastated she got all the support she needed. I, I felt like I'm actually not needed there anymore even though it's usually the coach's responsibility to go and cheer up the people after the bad race and tell them that you know it's going to be okay we will recover and there will be more chances in the future. I felt like I'm not even needed over there because the whole team was so overwhelmingly warm and they behave so fantastically that I've never been more proud of them than after that particular race even though the, the end result was completely not what we expected. I was also proud of Zuza because she showed a lot of spirit fighting through those bushes and trying to get the best possible result in the end and even though it didn't work out you will see in the pictures that I'm showing right now that it was a lot of struggle and absolutely she didn't give up and she kept pushing uh, till the end and she gave it uh, she, she gave it it all and that's absolutely all I could expect and I can expect from people that I'm coaching if you give your best that's definitely anything and all I can ask of the end is the, the rest is just you know the the result of your end performance so I guess what I'm trying to say with this video is that there is a lot of emotion connected to the relay race, the positive ones and the bad ones, and I'm trying to convince everybody watching this that it's best to focus on the positive results because everyone can have a bad race. And once in a while it would it will happen during the relay and i'm sure it happens to all of us it happens to me and it definitely happens to most of the people i'm really really a bit a little bit hesitant to say all of the people but that would probably be true um, although there are usually some exceptions to the general rule so who knows maybe you are this exception although i don't think so so if you are one of those people that feel the spirit of the relay race and if you are one of those people who always choose to support your teammates rather than throw a pile of garbage on top of their head after the bad race then i'm thanking you and i definitely wish that someday maybe we will be able to participate in a race together who knows maybe even a relay race i would definitely like that because i love running with people that share the similar values that I do. That's all. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos and in two weeks time on the channel, actually sorry, three weeks time on the channel there is going to be an awesome chat with Gustav Bergman where we are going to be talking a lot more about the relay race itself. It's going to be an amazing chat, you can't miss it, so I'll see you there.